Hi, my name is Matthew Zen, aka MT or Minder. Welcome to Emacs Conf 2021. I hope everyone is enjoying the conference so far. I am one of the maintainers of the Emacs application framework. I was also here last year doing Emacs Conf 2020 and did a 20 minute presentation on the overall architecture of EAF as well as a small demo. A lot of things have changed since 2020. And that's why today I'm here to present Emacs Application Framework, a 2021 update. So we all know Emacs, and we definitely know that Emacs is not just a text editor. It is a text-centric work environment, but it lacks efficient multimedia rendering capabilities such as website, PDF, and video rendering. We all want that, right? Therefore, the EAF project wants to solve this problem while also retaining the rich Emacs ecosystem and its customizability and extensibility. The solution is to outsource the hard part to Python and Node.js by bridging in Lisp with them so that Python and JavaScript can do the hard work and minimize the Lisp workload, which ultimately speeds up our end user experience using Emacs. Do note that Python and JavaScript already have a very mature ecosystem that provides a foundation to modern multimedia applications. So basically, EAF enables Emacs to extend to Python and JavaScript ecosystems, therefore extending to modern multimedia apps too. As we are on a tight schedule today, I can't go into every detail about how EAF achieves this. I did go through a lot of things during last year's presentation, so I highly recommend anyone interested to check out that presentation and the project repository itself. And today, we're focusing on what changed. Well, the first change that you will definitely notice is that we have a new logo. This logo uses gear wheels to symbolize how EAF extends Emacs to web and multimedia applications that bring new possibilities to Emacs. Since last year, EAF has replaced the Dbus communication technology with the cross-platform EPC, the Emacs RPC stack, which has an Elisp implementation and a Python implementation, exactly what we need. This and some other changes enable EAF to support Windows, Windows 10, and Windows subsystem for Linux, as well as all distros that support Pacman, APT, DNF, PKG, Zyper package installer commands, which includes the Archbase, Debian, and Ubuntu base, uh, Fedora, etc. However, do note that the Mac OS support works with some non issues. Have a look if you want to try it out. Previously, EAF was able to make Elisp communicate with Python as well as Python to communicate with JavaScript, meaning that Elisp can call Python functions and vice versa, and Python can call JavaScript functions and vice versa. But if you want Elisp to communicate with JavaScript, you have to go through Python, which is rather troublesome. No. Thanks to the EPC, Elisp can communicate with JavaScript directly using eval.js function and eval.emacs function in Elisp and Python respectively. This greatly simplifies the code that will be needed to write a web app in EAF. Speaking of web applications, Vue.js is a web framework that's been gaining a lot of popularity in recent years for its simplicity and functionality. <coughs> In the past, you were only able to write simple JavaScript and HTML web apps for EAF. It is quite some work to create a full-featured web application. Now, you can write Vue apps using EAF that work seamlessly with e Emacs and Elisp. There are a few existing EAF apps written with Vue already to demonstrate the possibilities of Vue-based extensions in Emacs. The first one is the EAF file manager written by Manati LazyCat himself as an alternative option to Diet, as he found Diet's performance to lag considerably when there are way too many files. It supports WDiet and FD functionality. And let me let me demonstrate that to you. See? 
and this is the app. Go back here. <laughs> and another one is the EAF RSS Reader, written by our Summer of Code 2021 student, Shao Chengheng. It is a fast RSS reader that uses the EAF browser for previews. And let me demo that to you as well. Automatic Emacs. And you can view every, every site in the EAF browser. To ease the process of creating a new EAF application, we've separated the EAF core and its apps so that EAF apps now have their individual repositories. You can find them under the Emacs EAF GitHub organization. Because of the number of EAF apps and their dependencies that vary from system to system, we've also introduced a new MX EAF install and update command, which is a wrapper around the new EAF install EAF Python script dedicated to installing, updating, and maintaining EAF apps and their dependencies for the end user. Now, it is very easy to create a new EAF app. You just need to do it, you can just do it in your own repository, such as in GitHub, GitLab, or wherever. The first thing to do is to fork the EF demo or the EF view demo as a starting template. Then update the dependencies.json file to list the new dependencies you introduced on various systems. Afterwards, once your app is finished, you simply need to submit a PR to the EF core that modifies the application JSON list to include your new app. And that's it. Come try out and write your own EF extensions today. There are many other new updates. To list a few, we reached more than 60 contributors. Hooray! And also, you can now use the familiar Ctrl S and Ctrl R iSearch for real time search functionality very similar to the Emacs iSearch in the EF browser, PDF viewer, and many other applications. Additionally, you can also create EF PDF annotations either inline or as a pop-up, etc, etc, etc. Finally, let's talk about PopWeb. PopWeb is a very, very new project that started like exactly two weeks ago that focuses particularly on the, on the multimedia pop-up functionality in Emacs. PopWeb is considered to be a sister project and lightweight version of EAF. They both share a very similar design and some code, and they are maintained by the same people, which is me and Anati Lazy Cat. Here's a quick demo to see the responsiveness of its preview. Here we go on the right. Oh, here we go. Yes. And these are the LaTeX preview. I can quickly show the next one. So, this is the end of my presentation. Feel free to post questions on the collaborative path, IRC, or directly send me an email. I'll be around all these, all these places. And if you found any issue, please submit an issue to the EAF official issue. And don't forget to check out the wiki. <laughs> Thank you and enjoy the rest of EnaxConf 2021.